Hey people of the interweb, I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back to Trilby's Notes. So, at the end of the last episode, we were asked to meet Sealbon, uh, to talk about O'Malley shipping, which is something we found out about during a flashback that we saw of kind of where the idol started. Hence the name of the last episode, the idol's genesis, or whatever it was. Open door. Now, well, the only thing I don't remember, which is kind of vital for this episode, is which room was Sea of Ons? Is it 2A? That was not the time! Prince, put me back in my world. Which one is it? Is it this floor? Yeah, because down there would be one, here would be two. Okay, take, pill, I took another pill. And, I know that was, one A, two, nope, that is the one. Shouldn't that be two? That's generally how hotels work. Whereas the first, like the floor where the lobby is, that is one. Right? Or is that just in America? I don't know. Okay. Making sure. Okay. I know how to spell. I do not know how to spell knock, apparently. <laughs> Doors open. Oh, okay. Open. Door. Come in, please, Terry. You have the papers? Must you always get right down to business? Come and sit down. Let's talk. Okay. How are you feeling? We were a little worried about you. I have these moments of illness. What do you want to talk about? The Fell Manor. Oh. Oh boy. It kind of interests me. I was really into the media coverage of the incident at the time. This client of yours, the one who wants the figurine, what does he know about it? Well, he has an interest in the occult. And there's some nonsense story about something. <laughs> something about the idol being a vessel for an evil ghost. I wasn't really paying attention. Really? I don't re remember hearing about that in any of my texts. No, you wouldn't have. It wasn't widely. Have you heard the story that Shelby was in the house? Oh, boy. <laughs> she doesn't know. She does not know. Oh, she's not good at putting two and two together. <laughs> I could feel cold sweat drooling. Sweat doesn't drool! <laughs> Down my spine. Every fiber of my being was concentrating on not giving any outward signs of alarm as Siobhan spoke of my secret name with wide-eyed enthusiasm. No one believes it, but Simone Taylor insisted it was true right up until, well, you know. She says he saved her from... Something. I think, I think that's a little far-fetched. It's exactly what Abed said. He says a ghost is one thing, but throwing Trilby into it just makes it seem silly. Truth be told, I don't think Abed believes in Trilby any more than he does ghosts. He's so... Grounded in reality. A sensible attitude. Have you have you always been an antique dealer? Whoa, 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 whoa. what the hell? Siobhan, please. I came here to talk about... Let me... Oh, have you ever been an antique dealer? I knew it! The outfit, the hat, Terry Railway. You're him. You were in Defoe Manor. And now you've come here to finish off the ghost. Oh, boy. Siobhan. I always knew there was something else. In this world, that there was something better, more glamorous, just below the surface. Will you take me with you? Listen to me. There is nothing glamorous about what I do. I live in shadows that threaten to consume me every single day. And if you pursue this any further, you're going to walk straight into one. What? What are you talking about? There is something extremely dangerous in this hotel. I don't know what it is, but... 
Oh, hi, Prince. Oh, God. No. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do I do? What do I do? Kick. Prince? Kick him! He wasn't close, close enough. Okay. I'm just gonna spastically do it. Kick. Prince. Of course he wasn't! That's how spastic I'm gonna be. <laughs> Kick. Prince. How is he not close enough? Kick. Prince. If he's not close enough now, I give up. B oh, oh my god! Go figure. Seal bomb was out cold, but uninjured. She would probably be safe on her bed while I continued my investigation. Now she's just gonna think I'm crazy. Okay, open door. Son of a brick. Come on! What kind of effed up investigation am I supposed to make now? There's no way Seobon is going to be on my side. Open door. This is the thing, she's gone. Seobon? Uh. That's strange. Look. Desk. A desk stood opposite. The bed, its only features were a television and a discarded backpack. Presumably seal bombs. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh boy. Okay, open door. Where'd she go? Knock. There was no reply. Open. Oh my gosh. Door. Chizo! Well, that's the first time we ever actually see that name. Okay. Open. Door. His body's here, his soul is not. Okay. So, what do you want me to do, per se? Also, if anybody says this, you haven't been this loud in a while. I know. I know I haven't. It's odd. Okay, I don't need- do I need to be in this area yet? I'm always gonna have, like, the guide on my phone just in case. Like, the fact that I was able to get as far as I was kind of surprises me, because I have not touched this game in so long. <laughs> it's, it's- as you could probably tell, it's kind of humorous to me, but let's see. see. Okay, so I was going down the right path. Okay, take pill. I took another pill. Open door. I had no business breaking into a room. Someone I didn't know. Oh, whoops. That's the wrong floor. Whoopsie daisy. Let's try this level instead. Open door. Open bag. I wasn't close enough. Well, how much? Go. Oh. Open bag. Under the circumstances, Seobon probably wouldn't mind. There were a few textbooks, a half empty water bottle, and a large folder marked O'Malley Family History. This I decided was my query. I flipped through the pages until I reached the information relevant to the 18th century and read my discoveries out loud. The Liverpool-based O'Malley Shipping Company ran for three generations of the family in the mid-late 18th century until the loss of one of the clippers drove the company to bankruptcy. 
The owner at the time, Jacob O'Malley, bla placed the blame somewhat irrationally on a shipping crate which family legend alleged to be haunted, and that had been... Okay, something. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding the crate, and the story of the crate's original origin is no less mysterious. It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter's at the Liverpool dockyards with a very expensive-looking harpsichord, which he insisted be smashed. Uh, okay? He refused to leave until the instrument had been utterly broken into its component parts in front of his eyes, and the wood sent to be okay. I'll have to read this on my own because I am interested. When pressed for his name, the man identified himself as the rooms of Jack Verhorn. July 28th, AD, 1778. So what trifle have you been wasting your t father's time with? What does that matter? It looks like a bird, I don't know. A harpsichord, actually. In the Flemish style. Quite old. Quite expensive. Well, I suppose I should be grateful that something is distracting you from the occult for once. I fear you may be speaking too soon, my friend. Oh, God. I should have known. You and your silly obsession. So, what devilry inhabits this magnificent... Oh, whatever. The instrument as a whole is, for the most part, untainted. But its keys are... Okay, seriously, dude? Here we go again. Alright, I am interested in the story, but it's going too fast for me to read it at once. If you guys want to read it, just pause the video. If you already know what it says, then when you played the game before. Um, I'm going to pause it myself just so I can thoroughly read it slowly. I cannot do that now because I don't exactly have a pause icon to do. Anyway, a well of uncertain... It, uh, oh my god, Unicorn? I'm so pleased you remember. I can hardly forget it. The way you have been obsessing quite heartily over it for late, of late. Your correspondence persists in filling your head with something. I could, I count myself very lucky to have tracked down even a small piece of the histor- He sounds more like a historian than an obsessive weirdo, but then again he's part of a cult, so... Yeah, that's obsessiveness if he's doing that, like, continuously. Usual batch of strange noises. I see sense, my friend. This curiosity of yours for all things ungodly has no doubt already be found to your immortal soul. You are a fine fellow, Wilbur, but you have not a drop of romance in your body. Why does that matter? Now, stop browbeating me for my inquiring. That night, Jack was stirred from his bed by the sound of music emanating from his new instrument. What? His first thought was anger, mostly because the harpsichord was an antique never intended to be played. But then he listened to the haunting, melancholy tune and felt his stomach roll inexplicably with fear. Wilbur, is that you? You wish, but no. I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah. Oh boy. What the hell? Was that. Was I just headless? Am I seeing things or was I just headless on there? Um. Jack could not take a step further because he re realized with a lurch that he recognized the dark figure that sat at the keys. He had read of this strange entity that recurred frequently in stories surrounding the Unicorn Inn, and the objects that were la later constructed from its wood. And he knew with absolute certainty that the tall man would destroy him were he not destroyed first. Oh, 
Alright, it's not gonna let me go that way. Oh, that's so weird. That's such a weird glitch. I can't go out there. Well, alright then. Uh... I am headless. That's such an odd glitch. Look. Table. Jack's desk was covered untidily in letters, notes, and papers he had been studying lately. A flintlock pistol given to Jack by his father lay gathering dust atop a pile of correspondence. Okay. Take. Pistol. Jack took the gun with him to confront the intruder. I'm gonna take the wild gander that I was supposed to take that to begin with. Shoot, tall man. You won't take me, demon! How does he do that? Uba? No! Oh god, no! But I could have sworn. You! I know you. You have... have... Oh god. P please forgive me, y your, your, your majesty, for my transgressions. I am a worthless, craven fool, not worth a second of your precious time. I beg you, spare me. I will redeem myself for my off offense. I will be yours forever, my body, mind, and soul. And you're spared, apparently. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Identified himself as one Jack Verhorn. This may well have been the same Jack Verhorn who went on to form a bizarre religious cult. A depraved group of page pageantist worshippers who was spoken of with... Okay, I am going to read that on my own because apparently I can't read myself. With my latest flashback, my knowledge of the history of the Cursed Wood gained another step. Before the crate, it had been a harpsichord, and some time before the harpsichord, it had been part of some kind of hostelry in Wales. An inn called the Unicorn. Why did that ring a bell? Somewhere in my recent memory. I had definitely seen something in the Clan Bronwyn Hotel that was linked to the place, but where? Take. Paper. Victim 3, for Horn. The third man who desired judgment was for. Oh, I get what's going on here. I just realized this. So it's going backwards in time. I, how did I just realize this now? So, victim. Five was the child. Victim four was uh, Mabuta. Victim three was the guy we just saw, Jack Verhorn. The third man who desired judgment was Verhorn, who had bought from those who made luxurious with luxuries with the wood that was the prince's soul. The prince came and struck down the lover of Verhorn, and Verhorn knew the name of the king. Okay, he spared for Horn because through, or wait, did we actually see him strike down, was Wilbur for Horn's legit lover or was that just, I don't, I don't know, maybe we didn't actually see the prince, what was his name again, I looked this up earlier, I should know this. Um, call me dumb. I don't know this much about the game. Uh, but who is he? What is his name? Uh, Cabadath. There we go. Okay. So, so now I can address him other than the prince I can actually use his name. 
So Kabadath, was he using... What, did he strike... Did he force um, Frohorn to strike down his own lover, or was he... Uh, was Wilbur not his lover? All I know is that Kabadath, he... I think he's... I think the last... The, the, the first man... Or the sixth man, probably. Maybe, maybe maybe Trilby is the sixth man who's desiring judgment. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's what uh, Kabadath is trying to do. But I don't know. I guess we'll find out sooner or later. Maybe. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't remember much. But the, anyway. Game. And Fahorn said, I know you now, O oh prince who was... The arrogant man, and I anticipate your wish, and I will devote myself to spreading the teachings you have brought me, and the love of our king. And the prince was satisfied, and Fahorn called all those who would listen, and they formed an order of blessed agonies that would work to redeem the follies of the men of technology. Okay, well, sure. Now what? That has happened. Now what? Am I supposed to go back into the realm of uh, magic? Maybe? Yeah. Yep. I'm supposed to go back into the realm of magic. There it is. We head west twice. Okay. Okay, so what I'm supposed to do is go downstairs and go to the table and take meat from it. Oops. Guess I wasn't supposed to grab that meat yet. So what it's asking what I looked at the I took a peek at the guide and it's telling me to grab the meat that I already got. So <laughs> whoops. Okay, so apparently the door, if I read this right, it should, the one that was blocked off before should be not anymore, or maybe that's the meat it's talking about, maybe it's saying take that meat. Whoa, 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 what was that? Hi! What, Lankman? L Lankman? Wait. Open door. Okay. I do, I do have the meat, right? Yeah. Open door. Use meat on... Beetles, I'm going to assume is what these are. Okay, well, we're safe to go across now. Look. Is this a body? At least two individuals had met with sticky ends down here. One of them had been almost completely picked clean by the beetles. The other, the other I noticed was heavily decayed, except for its hand, which was fresh and pink. I wondered if this had something to do with the puddle of water it was lying in. That's a little weird. Uh, take water? It was almost as if the water was drawn, drawing me to it. Not like a scrabbling thing in my mind, like the chisel or the painting, but more like a beckoning siren. I couldn't help myself. Crouched down and dipped my hand in. It felt uncommonly refreshing and brought an amount up to my lip. My unhygienic surroundings forgotten. As a pleasant feeling of simultaneous coolness and warmth spread from my stomach, I realized that the water had 
some sort of rejuvenating effect. I had no explanation for this, but at the time I didn't care. I was beginning to feel in the back of my mind the familiar tickling sensation that indicated a reality shift. So I swiftly scooped a few drops of the liquid into my pill bottle, shaking it through the remaining pills. Okay, well that's it. What? I don't know what just happened, but I guess we're done in that area for right now. Anyway, I am going to leave this video here. Uh, we'll progress. I don't know where. I don't know how. But we'll progress in the next video. In the next episode. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. If you got any suggestions for any uh, old horror games that you want me to play that kind of give you nostalgia, just let me know in the comments below. If you missed uh, either Five Days a Stranger or Seven Days a Skeptic, or if you're watching this randomly and you haven't seen my Six Days of Sacrifice playlist or playthrough yet, if I change these at all, uh, click the box down over there. It'll take you to one of them. Um, or if you want to check out the rest of the playlist for this game, click the box that's across from my head over there. In the meantime, I'm out, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!